Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another edition of Smokey Prince. My name's Smokey McGee. You can call me Jason. Either one works just fine. Today, we're going to go over Tinkercad. I use Tinkercad for a lot of different reasons, mostly for remixes, but sometimes for things I need to do or get or have on the fly, things that I can just build myself that doesn't take a lot of effort. And Tinkercad is a really rudimentary program that you can build off of very easily, but it doesn't need to be rocket science. And today's video is just going to be making something simple and showing you how to do it all from scratch. We're going to go ahead and go from start all the way to finish. We're going to throw it on the print bed and slice it. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoy this type of content. If you are, do me a favor, hit the sub, hit the like, let me know what you think of this video down in the comment section below, and let's go ahead and jump on in. All right, so first things first, we need to get to Tinkercad. So we're going to go ahead and go to Google and go Tinkercad, Tink, or Cad should load in just like so. We're gonna click on there. You will need to sign into a Google profile or a profile. Make a profile is actually super simple. I don't think I need to explain that much. We're gonna go into create design. And here we are. We are in the basics of Tinkercad. You can roam around the map freely like this by holding down the right click button and just kind of swirling things around. If you would like to hold anything or scan or highlight, you're gonna do the left click button. So we're going to do the left click button to drag our items onto the map. All of these are just the random shapes are already preloaded. You can do different designs, creatures. You can do a Funko Pop if you'd like. Um, hardware, a lot of it is just very basic shapes, but they're very functional. Everything is very functional in here. It's all kind of got its own purpose. But for our purpose on this video, we're going to stick to the basic shapes. We're going to make a headphone stand. I don't actually need one, but I'm curious if I can actually design this, especially from scratch. So we're going to use all the basic shapes that we can in order to do this. So follow the long you best you can, and I'll try to explain what I'm doing it as I do it. So we pulled a square out. We're going to go ahead and stretch it as the base. Actually, we're not going to stretch it. We're actually not even going to use a square. We are going to go ahead and use a, uh, a half circle because I think that might be more pleasing to my eyes. Um, from here, we're going to load up a square. And then we're going to stretch it. So in order to push and pull different objects, you'll notice that you have all these different pins. Now, something I learned that was really helpful. So say I don't want to go up, but I would like to go down. So I can pull it up and down. But say I like it at the platform that it is and I don't want it to move. I can go ahead and go down here and it'll actually give me the pull button down here, which was super, super convenient. Um, just a little fun little side note. Um, so we're going to go ahead and make some legs here. So about that long looks right, right? Yeah, that looks right. Um, we obviously don't need it that tall, so we're going to go ahead and make it small. We're also going to line it up with this. I'm curious to see how tall this is just like that. Now, it also doesn't need to be that fat. So we're gonna make it super skinny, just like so. And then we're going to tilt it because, well, balance is everything. And especially when you're putting your heavy headphones on these things, you're gonna want them as balanced as possible, really. So we're just gonna stick it into the base, just like so. And then we're going to go ahead and go up into the corner here. This little box here is actually going to duplicate and repeat. So I'm gonna click it basically just copy and pasted this shape. So you'll notice that it's in the same spot. I don't want it the same spot, but I'm happy it's the same length. So we're gonna go ahead and keep it kind of where it is right now. And then we're just going to go ahead and rotate it ever so gently. Nice little X here. We're gonna pull it over to here, line it up however we feel just works right for us. I think that's about right. And we're happy with that. Now. I can do one of two things here. I can either go in and tweak how much these are actually turned, like 
doing this and moving it in. Um, and that's how I do a lot of my things. Or this is where we get into some of the values of um, these numbers that are popping up. Um, so if you click on here, oh, come on, click on there, it'll actually populate this little white box. You can actually change the value of your angle simply by typing in there. Now, I don't necessarily need that, but it'll tell you how much it is. We're actually going to go back and do a zero on that. Or I guess because it's already popular, we can go negative 15 because we just did 15. Um, again, just one of those neat things to know about the program. So we got our base. We have our head. So if we look at a, a headphone stand, it's going to be tall. Now we can actually make this object taller simply by holding on to this and dragging up. That looks about right. Looks a little bit funny. Kind of looks like he's sitting down. I like it. Next, we're going to go ahead and add another shape to our weird head, funky headphone stand. Um, this time, let's go ahead and scroll down and see what shapes we have to play with. Do you want? Yeah, let's get weird with it. I'm going to show you something that I, I actually enjoy doing a lot. So we're going to pull in a circle. And you're like, but Smokey, it's a circle. How are you going to hang your headphone on that? Oh, won't we see? So we're actually going to drag this up. We're going to drag and make this long, just like so. We're going to make it a little bit skinnier, not a whole bunch skinnier, but a little bit skinnier. That way it doesn't look like we're sticking out too far there. And then you'll notice we kind of have the basics for a good headphone stand, except for we can't put our headphones right here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to basically erase this. Now, I don't know of another way to do this. So if you're somebody more advanced than I, please tell me how to do this because this is how I've been doing this this whole time. We are actually going to go ahead and grab a random shape. These little ones that look like they've been erased or negative. Now, if you look up here, you can do a hole, but I don't want to do that because I don't need that. But this is basically making a hole in whatever we put it in. So we're just going to turn it to the side like so. I want that at negative 90. So it's flat. And then we're going to pull it up. So it'll be a floating object for the minute. And we're going to pull it forward. Just like so. And the reason I actually went with the circle, not the square, is because I still want a little bit of a hook at the top. Just for my own reasons, I want it. Um, and because this is coming out through the bottom, that'll be fine and perfect. It's going to flatten out this top part. And just like that, we have a very, very, very basic headphone stand. Um, now, so say I'm done. This is what I want. This is the design that I've chosen. We're happy with this. And I, I'll be honest, I kind of actually am. Um, we're going to go ahead and go export. Now, if you press just STL, cool. But you need to press everything in this design. So it's going to make sure that everything that we've done in this design all gets transferred into one object. And we're going to go ahead and go into STL because that's how I do 90% of all of my prints. We notice that it uh, loaded up under Brilliant Clift Biscuit, something I didn't mention. If you'd like to name your, your prints, something I highly suggest, go headphone stand. Probably not the worst idea. Um, but because we already did it, I'm not going to worry about renaming it. We're going to click on our file. It's going to automatically load into a random 3D object program in uh, Windows. And there you have it. We designed a headphone stand ready for 3D printing. Now, I said we were going to go ahead and load this, and we are. So we're actually going to load this in two different programs just so you see how it works. First, we're going to load in a bamboo slicer because that's the one that I use, and I actually feel it's probably the easiest one to use. But you may be using Cura and may not have downloaded bamboo slicer yet. So we're going to do it both ways. So let's go ahead and jump in to bamboo slicer. All right, we're going to go ahead and start a new project. We're going to go ahead and go add. 
go up to our downloads, and there it is, Brilliant Clift Briskets, Briskus, I can't say that, I'm sorry, and there it is. Now, that's a little bit smaller than what we were planning. Fortunately enough, we can resize this in our slicer itself. We're going to simply hold on to that, make it a little bit bigger, because if I'm going to print this, and I think I might, we're going to want a little bit bigger, and I think right there should be about perfect. Probably even a little too big, but that's fine. Um, we're going to go ahead and use the pre-settings uh, pre inside of our slicer, because for this, I really don't care. We're going to slice it, and that's literally all there is to it with it. Oh, I guess we didn't add supports, so let's stop it. We'll add supports really quick. I use tree supports for things like this because they're just easier to use. On the build plate only, remove small, that's fine. Bamboo slicer, super, super easy to use, little things that you need. And that's the only thing that we're actually supporting right there. Um, we're looking at a two and a half hour print. And you know what, let's just full send it. We're gonna go to Mr. X. We're gonna print it in green, enable and send. All right, so Curie is a little bit different when you come in to look at it, but we're going to go ahead and go up into this file. We're going to click that. We're going to scroll all the way up to Downloads again. Scroll all the way over to our last thing that we just downloaded, which was the headphone stand. Now, this looks super tiny because this is on my CR10. We are going to go ahead and make it bigger just like so. What's neat about Kira is it'll automatically flatten it out to the bed. Um, and just like that, I think that's about perfect. We have 10% infill. These are our current settings as we load into. Feel free to take a stop motion look at these. These are my basic settings when using my CR10 3D printer. Um, we would go ahead and slice it. Now I'm actually gonna slice this because I'm curious how long this would take on the CR10 compared to the bamboo, which was two hours. All right, so we're looking at a respective 10 hours and 50 minutes on the CR10. Um, we're actually not gonna print it on this one. We already started our print on the bamboo. This isn't a comparison video. This was just a simple how-to uh, easy mode on uh, Tinkercad. Well, there you have it. We're all done. I hope this video was able to help you figure out a little bit more of what Tinkercad is. Like I said, it's a very simple program that I found early on that has helped me immensely going through uh, being able to do my own STLs, my own files, my own remixes, and not having to learn things like Blender or um, Fusion. Um, this is something very basic. It's not supposed to be the end all be all. Um, but Again, I hope I helped some of you. If I did, do me a favor, hit the sub, hit the like. Let me know what you think of the video down in the comment section below. Love your face, and I will see you later. Deuces.